What's up guys, my name's Aaron and I'm here at the BJJ Fanatics studio. I work for BJJ Fanatics and I have a special treat for you today. I'm gonna bring you a behind the scenes look at our DVD shoot with Bruno Malfacini. Bruno Malfacini is a 10 time black belt world champion at Roosterweight. He's the only athlete in Jiu Jitsu to ever win 10 world championships in the same weight division and he is now 3-0 and in MMA. This is one of the baddest men on the planet. So enough talking, let's get started. Here we've got Bruno in the building. What's up, man? We've got Bernardo. What's up, Bernardo? We're here with the man behind it all, Mr. Michael Zenga. Are you excited about this shoot with Bruno? Super excited. This is. It seems like it's been about two years in the making, but we're so we're so happy to have him here. I mean, you have a lot of guys who compete at Jiu Jitsu, but there's only one guy who's won the most. And the funny thing is that when you watch a lot of guys and they're out there. They sometimes seem to be playing the game and this and that. Bruno is just attacking. He's one of the most exciting guys to watch. Such a nice guy, such a smart guy. So it's just an honor to have him here. Awesome, man. I know you just got to see him teach a small segment. And what can you say about his teaching? Here's the thing, like as good as I expected him to be, it was better than I thought. The details were absolutely amazing. And like even me as a big guy, I felt like I could even do some of the things there. It's not just a little guy flying around that a big guy should never pay attention to. I mean, it is how to beat bigger guys, but the, the essence of it is just really perfect jujitsu and it's stuff that anyone can do. Even though he's a really athletic guy, I feel like there are some things that I can do myself. I agree for sure, I was genuinely impressed. So guys, keep your eyes open for the Bruno Malfacini set. here with Bernardo Faria and Bruno Malfacini. Between the two of them, we have 15 black belt world championships, and we also have a rooster weight and a super heavy. So guys, how'd you meet, and how long have you trained together? Yeah, so I, I met Bruno probably like 2006 or 2007 when I was purple belt, and he was a black belt. And I used to go to compete in Rio de Janeiro, which was, which was nearby my hometown, and we always would see each other and kind of competing close time, so we started talking, become friends. Then Bruno moved to Alliance in 2008, and actually it was him who invited me to move to Alliance, because we were friends, we were close, so he was the one who invited me, so that, that's how it is. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, I remember 2007, we were the words you know, talk about, like, things yeah, and yeah, yeah. and he used to train at uh, BTC and train at that team. And then I just saw with the up at the Alliance, you know, train together, live in the same apartment, you know. Uh, yeah, these guys have been helping me since like my first few years at the Black Belt. And yeah. like a brother, like my brothers. Yeah, <laughs> like a brother. No, it was a very fun time and we were living all in the same building. So I, it was a, such a great time of life, you know. I remember only on our building, there was like five Black Belt World Champions living in the same building. It was like yes. me, Bruno Malfacini, Michael Lang, Sergio Moraes, Leonardo Nogueira. Uh, there's one more. Uh, me, me, you, Leonardo Nogueira, Sergio Moraes, and Michael Lang. Yeah, five. Michael Lang. Five here. Yeah, so there was five World Champions living in the same building and living and briefing Jiu Jitsu. And uh, it's a fun time because it was a time that we both didn't have any money, right? Yes. <laughs> but I think it was probably the happiest times of our lives. It was not the best time, but it was good for you know for us like to help us to get here. I went to São Paulo for like three years. How long were you in São Paulo? Like, I was four years. Four years. Yeah. yeah. I moved to US like 2012, and then Bernardo I think he moved right after. I was uh, 2013. Uh, and it was like yeah, we were there like you know we struggled financially. But we had a great time, you know, I really miss those days. All the friends, like, we had, like, 
had the time at life that we could still like train a world champions training together. I mean, I think we could train the best time over there. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think like uh, it's gonna take a long time for some school yes. to have the level of athletes that are with an alliance at that time. Only on that mat was like the five of us plus Gabi Garcia, Luan Ozuhir, yeah. Fabio Gurgel, Tarsis Humphreys. Uh, just talk about the world champions, right? But there was like Batista, Antonio Coenado, there was a really tough one, Gustavo Junqueira, there was all these guys like training in the same place every single day. And uh, so it was such a great time. And uh, I remember like me and Bruno, we used to live a bit far from our hometown. So then in the weekend, everybody would go to their home. So that was like one, two hours around Sao Paulo. And we were the only ones left <laughs> over there in Sao Paulo. weekends, every um, weekend, doing absolutely nothing. Nothing, without yeah. money. <laughs> without money. So it was a tough, fun time, right? Yeah. Could call like that. And uh, now it's great to look back and see where we got and where we are. So it's, uh, well, it, was, it was worth it. Uh, I remember exactly, that was yes. the big question. I was like, where are you gonna get in this jiu-jitsu? You know? Like, why are you gonna become this crazy jiu-jitsu here? Like, everybody doing other jobs and this and that. And but I'm uh, very happy with we the made decision. It. We, we took, yeah. And uh, guys, now he's my bet to become the uh, world champion of UFC as well. He he has won ten world titles in jiu-jitsu. The only person in the world who has won this amount of world titles in the same division. So I call him the best pound for pound in jiu-jitsu, probably in the history. And uh, now he's doing the same path on MMA. He, he, he's already 3-0, and I'm very, I'm super sure very soon UFC is gonna get him. And I think those guys are in trouble. <laughs> That's funny because like yeah, I was uh, maybe I was like three, four times with Chenko, you know? and Bernardo was one of the guys you know that was telling man, you're gonna make, you're gonna make easy attack man. I was like man, shut up, I don't believe that, you know whatever, I don't believe. And he was always telling me that I was gonna get number ten. And then now he's telling me that I'm going to do a story where it changed one day. And the reason why I decided to make this transition, uh, of course, was because of him, the person, people that is around me, you know, that believe in me. But the main reason why is that I was looking for a challenge. I was still competing shit, but I was not making me happy anymore to win more titles. And I was looking for a bigger challenge. And, and the new reason that I moved like to MMA is that I really believe that I can make it, you know. I would not do it if I, you know, if I could see myself like as a number two, number three. Now I'm moving and in transition because I want to make history as a new jiu-jitsu. Yeah, so we, we, were, we were just talking about it uh, today or yesterday, I remember, like, uh, that uh, I think it's only worth moving to MMA if you believe you can be the champion, you know, because Nowadays, Jiu-Jitsu Spain, you can make a living from Jiu-Jitsu, you, you can do out well Jiu-Jitsu, so if you move to MMA to be like just one more MMA fighter, or even like if you make to, you make to the UFC, where you're like top 20, top 30, I think you can have a better living with Jiu-Jitsu. So in this case, Bruno went to MMA, not if the goal like, oh, I'm gonna be one more fighter, he's going to try to be the champion, you know, so yeah, it's then great. I think it's, it's worth it. Yeah, that's funny because like since the day one that I decided to make the transition, like it, I'm not thinking about anyone else. I'm thinking about the champ every single day. I'm thinking about the number one. I mean, and here the target. Like now we have a new one. Yeah, but I know I'm gonna make it. Yeah, and I'm guys. Out of time. Yeah, and guys, Bruno just filmed an entire structure over here that he's gonna do a series with us about how to beat the bigger guy. And uh, today was all about guards. It was amazing to see like how hard is for a big guy to engage with his style like that's why he's always able to beat the big guys and uh, even if you're on, on youtube you can look up like his match against gibson Sai. gibson's like my height it's like 6'3 or 6'4 230 pounds and he has been tough guys like Rodolfo Vieira, Buchecha when he was purple and brown belt and Bruno was able to beat him in the finals of the open class of the Atlanta Open. So you can see like how hard it's for a big guy to fight against him. So we showed him this entire instruction about that. Then he shows like all his tricks, all his little details. And it's gonna come out very soon. So keep an eye open. And it was really thank you.
10 time world champion Bruno Malfasini. We just finished up like eight hours or maybe even 10 hours of filming. How do you feel? I feel a bit tired, but actually it was easier than I thought. And it took me so long to get here because I spoke to Bernard for a long time that I would not like to do it while I was still competing. And I finally could make it. I'm so happy. I'm so happy because now I could share all my secrets. I hope you guys enjoy. There's so much good stuff there. All right, man. Thanks.